Good day, everyone, and welcome to March's Zoom formation call. I'm really sorry I can't be with you all in person today. I'm hopefully about to get off a plane if all things have gone well, uh, returning home to Cayman. Uh, nonetheless, I wanted to pass on my very best wishes to each and every one of you, and also to provide you with some thoughts and a bit of an update of where we are as we enter the last third of the rotary year. Yes, it never ceases to amaze me just how time flies, especially when you're enjoying yourself, as they say. And I sincerely hope each of you have been enjoying yourself this rotary year. As leaders, it's not always easy what we do, and from time to time it can be challenging. But when I look around our zones, zones 33 and 34, our districts and clubs, I see the great work that's being done in our communities as well as the fun that's being had. And I know that our zones are heading very much in the right direction. So my message to each of you today is let's do what each of us can and should be doing right now as we enter the last four months of this exciting Rotary year. Firstly, of course, you should, and I hear you are indeed, delivering amazing pets experiences for all of our incoming club leaders and presidents in particular, of course. And I know my successor, Director elect Patrick's has been seeing this at very first hand, uh, just as I did over the past two years, and has reported back that these events have been spectacular and really, really motivating uh, next year's leaders. So succession planning and continuity is, is, is so important, especially in an organization such as ours that changes most of its leadership annually. And there are a few things also that Rotary International that we're doing uh, and been working hard on to move away from a culture that can promote annual zigzagging to one that builds continuity and year on year momentum. These initiatives, which will start to be communicated from July 1st this year and fully implemented starting July 1st, 2025, include things such as coordinated three year presidential messaging plans, which align with our action plans priorities as opposed to standalone annual themes, which can, as we said, zigzag. They include some simplified uh, sets of three-year goals that our clubs will enter into Rotary Central, encouraging them to build multi-year plans, again, as opposed to taking annual approaches to their members' experiences. And all of this is supported by, at zone level, multi-year regional plans, such as MAP, the Foundation Regional Action Plan, and the newly designed Communications Action Plan, providing districts and clubs with tools and resources to make these things happen. We're intentionally moving towards a culture which is very different from the one we've experienced as leaders in the past. One designed to enable our clubs to build year on year momentum with the goal of creating better experiences for all of our members. So that's the medium term goal. But what can each of us do now as we enter this final third of this rotary year? Well, certainly, as I said, you should all be doing your part to ensure that we walk the talk in terms of continuity. Work with your districts and clubs to achieve this, please. But more directly, let's remind ourselves of Rotary's top two priorities. Firstly, our top corporate priority, the eradication of polio. If you haven't done this already, go to the Rotary International website and make a donation. Go back to your club and ask the question, how close are we towards meeting our $1,500 per Rotary Club annual goal? Did you even know we had one? Go back and ask this, please. Because at this point, and I don't want to appear mercenary, but we really need your $1,500 to meet that $50 million target, which will be matched two to one by Bill and Melinda Gates to get us over the line. So let's make it happen. Secondly, let's look at our top internal or organizational priority. Yes, membership growth, of course. And once again, our zones appear to be doing very well and holding their own and are in the top three within North America for a second year running. We've adopted a mantra of consistent, moderate year-on-year -year growth. And to achieve that, it needs us all to focus on doing as much as we can between now and June 30th to make this happen. This means starting those new clubs now, whether they be traditional model clubs, satellite clubs, corps-based ESC clubs, or companion service-based clubs, like our impact clubs in zone 33 and 34, let's take them over the line now and give new members the opportunity to serve 
and existing members who we may be losing possibly the opportunity to stay as part of our Rotary family. 50% of Zone 33's new members last year came from new clubs such as these. So this is a proven source of both member acquisition and retention. In our existing clubs, let's make these last four months count. Let's make them the best our members have ever experienced. Put that extra effort into our meetings to make them a source of great value to our members and bring greater impact to our communities. In other words, let's look to the future and sure, let's build continuity and momentum, but let's also finish this year strong. So talking about impact, it gives me great pleasure today to introduce our Water and Sanitation Month speaker, the Executive Director of an audacious high impact program that's leading Rotary's wash sector globally. A program that you'll hear is building a strong and sustainable culture in a structure and structure in a country which has more challenges now than at any time during its recent history. Please join me in welcoming Ryan Rowe, the Executive Director of Hamwash, will tell us more about just how Hamwash is not only surviving but helping build towards a better future for Haiti and its people, including Rotary and our Rotaract families living there. Ryan, over to you and thank you. Um, good. Well, thank you, everybody. It's uh, it's fantastic to be here. Um, appreciate you know all the support that the zone, uh, your zone, zone thirty three and thirty four, have provided to Hanwash um, in in getting this uh, getting this initiative off to such a roaring start the last uh, six years. Uh, I know that probably a lot of you have been seeing the news over the last 24 hours and noticing the extraordinarily grave situation in the capital of Haiti in Port-au-Prince. Um, and I just, you know, I, I wanted to acknowledge what is happening there in the country at the moment uh, this week. Uh, you know, it's obviously hitting a new low. Um, you know, innocent people caught in the crossfire, men, women, and children. Uh, without access to basic services, water, of course, principal among them, sanitation, education, healthcare, um, joblessness, and and hunger. A lot of people are going hungry uh, because of food insecurity. Um, but amidst this really bleak situation, one of the things that I'm here to talk to you about today is hand wash. And I think that that can give the entire Rotary world uh, a reason for hope. As you know, uh, after the 2010 earthquake in Haiti, Rotarians in grand numbers, including in your zones, poured into Haiti to help uh, in making investments in all manner of projects in line with Rotary's areas of focus, including water and sanitation. On this map, you'll see from 2014 onwards alone, almost $5 million was invested in, hand, in water and sanitation projects that had nothing to do with hand wash before hand wash had been created. Despite those investments and all the hard work that was poured into uh, that work in Haiti by Rotarians from your zones and other and elsewhere, there were some challenges with those projects. One of the challenges, first of all, was that a lot of these projects were being sponsored by American and Canadian Rotary Clubs, but without a lot of strong input from Haitian Rotary Clubs, as defined by the Rotary Guidelines, Rotary Foundation Guidelines. Uh, the local government was also not really invited to participate or consulted or even informed in some cases of the work that was happening. A second challenge was many of this work, much of this work was humanitarian oriented, uh, meant that it focused on providing for basic needs, but wasn't thinking about a long-term sustainable development point of view. And the third issue was that a lot of these projects, folks were not really talking to each other. They weren't sharing lessons and learning from each other. So what happened was with all these investments, Rotary realized it was playing a huge hand in trying to solve the problem, but may also have become part of the problem. And despite the fact that there is a wash area focus manager and a global uh, focus on water and sanitation worldwide, Rotary realized it needed to double down on its investment to improve the way uh, water and sanitation investments were being happening in, in Haiti. With that in mind, Rotarian leaders in 2018 got together uh, to discuss ways in which they could address this problem. Um, and you're gonna see, um, you're gonna see that the District 7020 is, is, is uh, in the Caribbean, which covers 10 countries in the Caribbean, 2000 members or more, 83 Rotary Clubs. 
um, was principal among those actors in bringing to the table the National Government Agency on Water and Sanitation, which was DINEPA. Uh, you can see some familiar faces here. You've got TRF Chair Barry, your very own Director Jeremy, past Director uh, John Smarge as well. And so with all these these influential actors at the table, including the Haitian government and Rotary in the district, uh, the stars were aligned, as you might say, for Henwash to be created. So as a District 7020 initiative, what that means is that it's a program that is supported year after year by the, uh, by the, uh, by the clubs of 7020, and most principally by the clubs in Haiti itself. And one of the ways in which that happens is what we call champion or district partnerships. Uh, champion partnerships that form a partnership with a Rotary Club in Haiti to basically adopt or partner with a local municipality, a county in Haiti. And under the Handwash program, five communes, so five municipalities, have been designated as the priority focus with an additional two waiting in the wings. And each of these communes has partnered with a club in Haiti, for example, in the Southwest, we have the Club of Lake High, which is partnered with a district in your zone, District 6960. We have PDG Don Thomas on the call today, who has been championing that effort as the chair of the Handwash Committee in his district. Other folks like Sandra Hempstead and, uh, and Neil Snyder, who have been supporting that work with donations from their clubs and hard work writing grants. We also have a partnership with the Club of Leogan for the Commune of Leogan and District 5130 in California. We've got the Club of Gonaive Memorial partnered with District 6290 in Michigan and Ontario, Canada. And we have the Club of Pino, which is partnered with, again, another district in your zones, 6940. Uh, and that effort is being led by PDG Jan Pooley and PDG Ted Kircher and the enormous amount of work that they've put into that, uh, to that program in that part of the country. And then finally, in the northern part of the country, the Club of Cap Haitian is partnered with a district in British Columbia and Washington State, 5060. So far over the last six years, we've put together a program, an investment portfolio of over $2.3 million, which has entirely been funded by contributions from Rotarians, clubs, and districts with matching contributions from the Rotary Foundation for global grants. An incredible, incredible achievement. Here's a look at some of the investments that we're working on in Haiti right now with some of the numbers, but I wanna draw your attention to what Jeremy was referring to as impact. Let's look at the people whose lives have been transformed by this initiative. On the right-hand side in that column, you'll see the number of people that have benefited from these investments, most of them being global grants. The bottom two rows in red are the investments that were currently in the stages of planning. And the Leogan Global Grant, the first global grant for the commune of Leogan, is looking for contributions of cash and DDF from clubs and districts of up to, uh, it'll be about 180 to $200,000 when you factor in the matching contribution from the Rotary Foundation. So please, as Jeremy urged you, as you approach the end of your Rotary year, please think about your clubs and your districts and what you could give to support this global grant. Thank you. Um, so you might be wondering, how does all this work? Jeremy mentioned the polio eradication story, and we think, what is the success of polio eradication? Well, really, it's predicated on three ingredients that Rotarians give of themselves to support polio eradication. One is advocacy, using your voice and your influence to win hearts and minds to a cause. Second is fundraising, give it, digging into your pockets or rallying others around you to contribute to this cause with their generosity. And third, volunteer service, and you all know that so well. And so in this way, Handwash is modeled in the same successful recipe as polio eradication to bring Rotarians together from Haiti, partnered with Rotarians from around the district, including with Rotarians in other zones and across the country, Canada and the United States. One of the things that makes us different from a typical charitable or humanitarian approach is the way that we run the organization. I run Handwash like a business, although it is a nonprofit, we're looking to instill a culture of competitive procurement, transparency, and value for money. And that is at the heart of how we achieve sustainability. Also the idea of local leadership involving Haitians in the planning of the future of their communities and their country is what is actually the, the, the foundation of contributing to sustainability. Over the last, uh, over the last uh, few years, 
One of the notable things about our program has been the Hand Wash Ambassador Program, where Rotarians advocate in their communities with local authorities to be able to win hearts and minds to the way water and sanitation can be invested in in a different way within Haiti and within these communities. In February 2023, I was lucky to travel to Haiti to the capital, Petionville, and be able to meet with the Rotarians from the clubs of Petionville and Club of Petionville Sud, where they hosted us for a discussion on how hand wash can go to the next level. We then visited seven other communities and cities around the country, uh, either flying by plane or by road, to be able to meet with Rotarians and discuss opportunities for them to participate in hand wash and to grow this program uh, with the support of their clubs and their clubs members. In March 2023, in Cap Haitian, the Interclub Assembly was an opportunity for District Governor David Kirkaldi, DG, uh, DG, uh, sorry, District Governor Deborah Howell, DGE David at the time, and DGN Dominic, who is from Haiti, to meet with the government of Haiti and talk about the renewal of the partnership. We also see that around the world over the last year, we've conducted advocacy in numerous cities and countries around the world to get the message out, to talk not only about how folks can help Haiti, but how Haiti is an example for what Rotarians could be doing in their own countries and their own communities using those three ingredients of fundraising, service, and advocacy. This year in Singapore, if you're gonna be there, we'd urge you to join us for our hand wash annual dinner you can sign up on our website. We would love to have you there. The picture you see is when past, uh, when Director Jeremy was passing over the mantle to past Assistant Governor Fritz to take on the role of leading our steering committee, a job which he, uh, big shoes he's been filling for the last year. And we're so excited to have Haitian leadership at the core of Hand Wash. A picture here. I just wanna stop here and illustrate for you. This moment here is where Haitian Rotarians and citizens are being trained in how they can use uh, their mobile phones to upload data to a platform to monitor the quality of service of drinking water that's being delivered to people within this city in Haiti. And I'm excited to announce that in August of 2023, we were able to flip a switch and finally deliver 24 hours a day, seven days a week, drinking water service to the people of Pino, 1,600 people. And that's all thanks to the efforts of the folks in your zone in District 6940, led by PDG Jan Puli. In August as well, we also signed an agreement with a Rotarian who had left his estate to fund a major wash initiative in a place like Haiti. And he agreed, uh, well, he's posthumously in his estate, they bequeathed $2.5 million to support hand wash and getting to the next level on one condition, that that $2.5 million be matched with up to $7.5 million more. So the challenge is on. That's what we need to raise over the next five years to keep hand wash going and in benefit from the support that's offered by Steve Matson, a Rotarian from Apple Valley, Minnesota. One of the interesting things about this is that very soon after this was announced, Rotary Clubs in Haiti put their hands up and said that they wanted to participate in funding the initiative and immediately gave money to Hanwash to support this work as co-investors and partners, not just beneficiaries. In, two, in October, we were at the Zone Summit in Bahamas, and many of you were uh, there in, in, in participation. You were able to witness the re-signing, the renewal of a partnership with the Haitian government on stage, where Director General Guito Edouard declared that he was totally satisfied with his partnership with, Haiti, uh, with Rotary, and that he wanted to thank the Rotarians of your zone specifically for your support and solidarity for transforming the future of the country. In November, we returned to Haiti, and for the first visit since the pandemic, an international Rotarian from Canada was able to return to Haiti. She's a primary contact on a global grant worth half a million dollars in the northern part of country. And uh, after the visit to the community where we were able to see the work, we went to an island on a boat, and we were able to enjoy some, some fun and some drinks and be able to get to know each other a little bit better. It's nice to be able to see a different side of Haiti. Uh, you know, it's not always just about poverty and, and, and stability. There is so much good in the people of Haiti, and we wanted to make sure that PDG Sherry Chamberlain was able to see that. In January, just a month and a half ago, we hired another new staff member for Handwash, a monitoring and evaluation officer whose role is to measure the impact of our investments. He's based in the city of Lake High, where he'll be able to directly support 
Rotarians in the Rotary Club of Lekai in their work measuring the results from their global grant. Just to illustrate for you the way that Rotary works again in Haiti through Hanwash is that there are 24 clubs in Haiti. There are 17 Rotaract clubs, and these Rotarians and Rotaractors basically lead the discussion with partners from within Haiti and from around the world towards the transformation of their communes. This is a Haitian-led program. And one of the things that we've noticed is that Rotary itself in Haiti is growing because of handwash. While I was there last year, I was lucky to witness the chartering of a brand new Rotary club with 33 brand new Rotarians on stage in Cap Haitian. It was an absolutely incredible sight to see. So one of the things I want to leave you with is that Rotary can transform society. And these are not just mere words. If you think about the fact that in many communities around Haiti and around the world, the lack of access to basic drinking water forces people to compete for that scarce resource. And when all the other things are taken into account, they're competing for education and sanitation and for jobs, you can see how the seeds of conflict or of tension can be sown in a society. But the reverse or the opposite is also true. By placing Rotarians in the center of these conversations between citizens and leaders and restoring basic public services that citizens depend on for their livelihoods, for their well-being, you can see how you restore confidence in government. And that, my friends, is one of the, one of the pillars of what they call positive peace. And so I want to leave you with this message that these three ingredients of Rotary service fundraising and advocacy can truly create hope in Haiti and in the world. Thank you. Over to you, George. Thank you, Ryan, for all that great information on Hanbush. What other organization would have the temerity to believe they can supply an entire country with fresh water? What a wow project Hanbush is. I am George Robson Burnett, and I have the honor of being the Zones 33 and 34 MAP Chair and I would like to thank the Zoom Formation team for the opportunity to update everyone on this call regarding the Zones 33 and 34 Membership Action Plan. As a reminder, this plan was conceived right here in our zones by dedicated Rotarians who recognized that we had to get intentional about membership growth and who further realized that for any plan to work, it needed to gain traction in the clubs. The plan has developed over its lifespan, and this was also intentional. Jeremy famously said, this was an airplane we would have to build while flying it. So what is happening with MAP? Well, one thing is for sure, it's sticking around as our income, incoming director, Patrick, is as committed to the program as Jeremy was at its inception and has been throughout its existence. We continue to produce our monthly bite-sized webinars and continue to have several hundred attendees, but we are not complacent by any means. We know that this is an audience we need to grow. And that's where you can help. I would ask all district leaders, including DMCs and ICAs, to continue your, your efforts to attract club presidents, club membership chairs, and all of those interested in strengthening their clubs to register for those webinars. The clubs and your districts will greatly benefit from their attendance and adoption of the great takeaways gained. We also have a team of MAP ambassadors in each zone, ready and able to spread the word about the advantages of the plan and also Rotary's action plan, which is, of course, a central element of Rotary International President-elect Stephanie's plans for the coming year. We interweave impact, reach, and adapt into our programs at every stage. You can get more information on all of this on the Zones 3334 website. And we also have a library of the webinars we have produced so that anyone can catch up on the program or can be selective and look for a particular me membership subject that interests them and then view it on their own time frame. And talking about websites, the, that brings me to the Membership Success Center perhaps the best and most innovative aspect of the membership plan. It is accessible through TACDV and uses real data to not only show clubs where they are and where, but also a guide and predictor of future expectations. This is a fabulous tool 
and continues to wow club Rotarians who find their way to it. So not only have a look yourself, but encouraging all clubs to view and use the tool, which by the way, also gives recommendations. And this will certainly pay dividends for those clubs and for your districts. So I hear you ask, does it work? Well, I'll answer that by identifying the two most successful North American zones as regards membership in last Rotary's year. And yes, you guessed it. They were zones 33 and 34. I emphasize that this is a homegrown product, but it is no longer confined to our zone borders. Interest in our map has been global, and we have been blessed with a great deal of scrutiny and support from senior personnel in Rotary International. I say blessed because they have encouraged both tangibly and verbally our actions. And we do like to boast that the development of this plan led not only to the foundation plan, but also to our communication plan. But also through the determination of our director, it, it has led to the creation of three year rolling plans for the whole of Rotary. But again, we're not complacent. Our core map team from both zones is constantly looking for the best means to expand our audience and appeal. And currently we are looking at a variety of new initiatives to attract more clubs and Rotarians to recognize the benefits. But we will always, see, always be very mindful to respect their time by ensuring quality, concise, relevant communication with usable takeaways and advice. The communication in the future will come by various means and not just by monthly webinars as is current. So you may be asking what you can do to help with this critical membership growth and club strengthening program. If you have not already done so, please familiarize yourself with the program and promote it whenever possible to your clubs. Sharing invitations to map events on district websites and newsletters will also assist in getting the program to reach new audience members and sharing our Facebook posts will also help spread the word. MAP is there to help you and all clubs be intentional about growing more to do more. And incidentally, there are annual district and club awards attached to the program, recognizing participation and success. By the way, our next webinar is coming up next week. Please promote it and of course, attend yourself. I can assure you it is 45 minutes well spent for all those interested in strengthening Rotary. So we're very much in pet season currently and we in Florida have just had all Florida pets whereby MAP was not only central to the main curriculum, but it was also very well received in every one of the district breakouts. I hope you all have MAP included in your pets presentations. And talking of pets, we in Florida were, are very mindful that pets is all about the PEs. And with that in mind, our first general session is hosted and presented by a PE. This year, that honor went to our next guest, president-elect of St. Augustine Rotary Club, Taja Alexander. Now, due to a family commitment, commitment, Taja comes to us from her car today. Taja did an absolutely fabulous job, and she will now give us her reflections on the pets just attended. So over to you, Taja. Thank you, George. Um, I wanted to start out by saying that Daryl, Keys, and George did an outstanding job at pets. Uh, they had the right people in the right place. Everyone was welcoming. They were approachable. There were plenty of support to direct us numerous lost Rotarians trying to find our ways to the various meeting rooms. They maintained the My Event app, which had each PE's schedule and map to where their room was included in it. And there were some times when there was a change that needed to be made to the schedule, and they immediately updated that app. So that was extremely helpful. I visited multiple hospitality suites, and each one of them was was filled with laughter, idea sharing about fundraising and projects, and also contact exchanges. 
All of our learning facilitators were thoroughly informed on their topics and extremely helpful. We were provided with training materials and referred to other beneficial online sources uh, if we had any questions about strategic planning. Um, we heard from top Rotarian leaders. Patrick Eeks came and he encouraged us to make emotional bonds with our members, saying that we are a member organization who does service. And he used that example. We had a video which showed cats being herded. And he said, you know, you need to find out what their food source interest is. And if you have to move it, move it. So next we heard from Jason Brown. He gave a very enthusiastic presentation and encouraged us to make membership memorable. And to really impress that into our memory, he used the phrase, make M&Ms, make membership memorable. Next up, we had Jenny Stotts, and she encouraged us to be excited about Rotary. And she used an example where she showed us a red kettle that she had purchased online, and she liked it so much she shared it with a coworker who shared it with another coworker. And she said, "If I can be this excited about a red kettle, how much more excited should we be to share Rotary with others?" And then after her, we got to hear from Jason Smarch, who was fantastic. He was really poignant in telling us when we are in Rotary, we become presidents, we have a vision of what we want and where we see the direction of our club going. And he said, you really need to be mindful of your entire club. You know, people, when they come in from years one to five, they're interested in the business connection aspect. Then you have people in years six to 20, they might be more interested in the service aspect. And then we have people that are 21 year plus that maybe are just going for the social aspect of Rotary. In my club, I have a gentleman who's 104 and I can tell you, he's not gonna be out at the beach cleanup, but he is there every Monday at our meeting. Um, and then finally, we had the great honor to meet have a photograph with and hear from Jennifer Jones. And she told us all the amazing things that Rotary achieved during her year. So what I can say is every person that I interacted with was warmed, felt welcomed, was sharing information, learning from each other, excited about their year. It was informative, it was inspiring, and I'd like to go back again. It was great. I appreciate being invited to uh, introduce the PEs and um, I thank you for your time here today. George, back to you. Unmute, George. In there, yeah, yeah. Oh, thank you so much, Taja. And there was one great speaker that you missed out and that was yourself. Uh, absolutely fabulous. We took a little bit of a risk. If, if Tasha hadn't had a good time at Florida Pets, she would have told us she's a very honest person. And of course, that's the way we are in Rotary. We always tell the truth. But I'm so delighted that you had a great time, Tasha. Uh, and thanks for a great report. R really much appreciated. Well, and now thank it's time you again. for some. Okay, thanks, Greg. And now it's time for some uh, public image updates and information. And we are privileged to have both of our Rotary Public Image Chairs with us today. So I hand this over to Billy Black from Zones 33 and Susan Corter from Zone 34. Billy and Susan, what have you got for us? Hey, thank you, George, and hello, everyone. Uh, Billy and I are gonna do something a little bit different today. We had, if any of you were able to attend our January Public Image webinar, we had a really successful turnout and such great response. The topic was using AI tools to enhance your Rotary uh, job or role. And so we wanted to do a quick demonstration uh, for you today on how to use ChatGPT and the Canva magic tools in your uh, rotary responsibilities. So Billy, if you're going to share your screen, let's let's go ahead and go to openai.com and ChatGPT and uh, type a command in there and show these folks what it's all about. Okay, I think I am uh, sharing my screen. Is that correct, Susan? Yep, we see it there. Okay. So oftentimes in Rotary, we're asked to do something and we just don't know how to get started. So I'm going to say that each of you have been asked to create an installation speech for my Rotary Club. So I'm going to type that in here. Well, of course. And as we mentioned on the webinar, ChatGPT can be used to generate many different things. So installation speeches, create text for your social media, 
post, create a content calendar, uh, many different things to just get rid of that dreaded blank white page. So I've got my um, prompt in here and I just hit enter and it starts to think about um, what I want and I've never had it. <laughs> okay. And of course we'll have a glitch here. Yes. So it's supposed to give us, and let's see if I can new chat. This is what Sean was worried about. And you can actually click on that left hand installation of new Rotary president and it'll pull up a, a previous. Or so not. Chat GPT <laughs> saves all of your commands and results. Hey, Billy. So it's going to be a little bit yes. difficult today. Maybe try switching from chat GPT 3.5 to 4.0 top left. You see it? That might help. To the right. I don't see it, but I don't want to spend a bunch of time. Let's yeah. hop over to Canva. Sorry, I'm going to hop over to Canva and I'll get back into chat GPT quickly. But I think what you will want to do is go to chat GPT and type something in for yourself and see that it creates a whole um, speech. And what you do then is take it and put it into Word, copy and paste it into Word and make it truly your own. You'd never want to use exactly what comes out of the words of artificial uh, intelligence. But here we're at Canva and I'm going to create a design and say a Facebook post and ask it to create a social media post that features women. And I'm hoping that this is, there we go. This is the one that came up the other day. So I'm not real sure what bacon has to do with empowering women and making a difference, but let's um, go to this one, Women's Day, International Women's Day. We might could use that, but um, we might want to also go to brand and add branding colors in there. And let's see what will happen when we add it. There's our branding colors and then bring over our logo and move it down. And very quickly, I have something that I could post on social media. And this one is a Facebook post. And it's hard to capture everything that we did in the webinar in a quick three minute blurb on this call, but we wanted to demonstrate some of the AI tools that we've utilized and found really helpful and beneficial um, in our public image roles. So hopefully you can utilize these, just test them out, try them out, you won't break them. Go to openai.com, try out the chat GPT features, type in different commands. The more specific you are, you can either tell, you can even tell it your specific Rotary Club. Uh, the more specific you are, the more accurate the results are going to be. And of course, don't ever put any personal identifying information in there, uh, no personal information, and always proofread it and edit it before you share any of the any of the content or results that is that's generated through ChatGPT or the other AI tools. You can view a recording of the webinar at elevaterotary.org. And I think Billy, do we have anything else before we hand it back over to Chris? Uh, we do not, but we have something on March 6th, which would be a workshop. So if you want to see it actually work, come <laughs> in. And I think Chris has got some more slides for us. All right, guys. Thanks. Um, thanks a lot. Uh, we're going to get you out to your breakout rooms uh, very shortly. And uh, just as a reminder, um, on the breakout rooms, um, you should see uh, choices pop up on your screen as soon as I open those up. Um, then you can just kind of self-select where you would like to go. Um, we're going to uh, have three today. That is going to be um, you, uh, hand wash uh, with Ryan to learn more about that. Definitely encourage you guys to pop over to that breakout if you want to learn more. Um, George uh, can go a little, little bit more in detail on MAP. And then uh, Billy and Susan are going to be available in a public image breakout. Um, so we'll get those opened up for you uh, very shortly. Um, quickly, as far as uh, upcoming events, um, we do have a follow-up workshop. Um, the uh, first workshop was very well received. And so we're going to go uh, you know, a little bit uh, deeper into that. And that's going to be on uh, March 6th. Next slide. 
All right. And then we have our website. Well, <laughs> and, and I, they're firing through for us, folks. Um, the website success secrets uh, that's coming up Tuesday, March 26, uh, 2024. You can register for that at elevate rotary zones 3334.org. And of course, uh, we have um, district team training um, that's going to be for Zone 33, and that's coming up April 11th through 13th. I um, definitely need to go ahead and get registered for that uh, for our folks in Zone 33. And of course, our Zone 34 district leadership seminar is coming up uh, June 22nd, 23rd, and I believe that uh, registration is also open. All right, and as always, um, you can stay connected with us through the uh, mediums that you see there. Also wanted to um, point out um, in April, uh, we don't have a promo slide for this yet, but we do have a public image boot camp um, coming up. Um, that, guys, is going to be a must attend. Um, that is going to uh, get you primed uh, for success uh, for the upcoming year and how best to leverage public image for your clubs. Um, so we're going to go ahead and, well, jump in the gun. Sorry, guys. Um, this is all usually all on one slide, but uh, not today. So uh, May 27th, of course, Southland Breakfast. This sells out every single international conference. So make sure if you're interested in going to this, um, it's a hot ticket. Go ahead and get registered. Which leads us, of course, right into our Rotary International Convention, save the date, 20, 25th through 29th. Again, you're going to want to go ahead and get registered for that as well. All right, and that is all, folks. So we're going to go ahead and open up the breakout rooms. If you do have um, problems uh, with the pop-up, again, you can press the More button. Um, you should see the breakout option to choose your room. Um, if that uh, th doesn't work either, Art and I will be in the main room. Uh, just speak up, and we will be more than happy to direct you into the room of your choice. Without further ado, 